What's up, 8th grade? Let's do another uh, review. Let's do Tuesday's review. Okay, so on the exam, do you remember how in the year we were, we were actually balancing chemical reactions? Well, guess what? You'll never actually have to do that in 8th grade, right? Congratulations. On the 8th grade exam, you'll never have to do that. The reason I made you guys do it before is because it was difficult and doing difficult things is good for your brain. But it's going to be much easier now, right? Because you don't have to, have to you don't even have to balance these things. You will see a chemical reaction on the state exam. Um, but uh, you will not have to balance them. You'll simply have to just look at an equation and tell me if it's balanced. For example, look at this one. It says, is the following equation balanced? Prove your answer by counting the number of atoms on each side. So you've got iron plus oxygen, O2, goes to iron uh, oxide, Fe2O3. So remember, I taught you how to do this. All I want you to do is count the atoms. There's how many iron atoms on the left-hand side? There's one. How many oxygens are on the left-hand side? There are two. How many irons are on the right-hand side? Two. How many oxygens? Three. Okay, so is this balanced? Okay, we're asking ourselves, are the number of atoms on each side the same? The number of irons are not the same. Nope. Are the number of oxygens the same? Nope. This guy is not balanced. Okay, that's it. That's all you're gonna have to do in eighth grade. You will not have to balance them like we were doing in class. Okay. So the next one says, is the following chemical reaction balanced? 2HCl plus 2Na, which is sodium, goes to 2NaCl plus H2. Okay, so you guys gotta become professionals at counting. So remember, if you have a coefficient on the outside here, remember what that, that two is called. It's a, if it, there's a number on the outside of the molecule, it's called a coefficient. And I want you guys to draw parentheses around the molecule itself, okay? So that way you see that it's not just two hydrogens, it's not just two hydrogens that you're getting, but you're also getting two chlorines. Okay, do that with this molecule as well. And let's, let's count the atoms. There are hydrogens on the left-hand side, there are chlorines on the left-hand side, and there are sodiums on the left-hand side. So that means that automatically you've got to have the same uh, atoms on the other side, right? Because mass is conserved. If mass goes in, mass comes out. You're not going to have some new atom over here that wasn't over in here. That's impossible, right? You can't just create an atom out of nothing in a chemical reaction. So. How many hydrogens are there? Well, if there was no coefficient here, you'd say one. But now since there's a coefficient here, there's two HCl molecules. So really, it's this, right? There's two molecules of HCl. So there's two hydrogens, right, on the left-hand side. There's also two chlorines. How many sodiums? Well, you could think of this as a molecule in and of itself as well, even though a sodium atom by itself technically isn't a molecule. That's a, that's a detail, it doesn't really matter. We have two sodium atoms. Now, let's go to the other side. So now we have two sodium chloride molecules plus one molecule of H2 gas. So how many hydrogens are there? Well, here is the hydrogen, but there is a subscript that says that there are two of them. How many chlorines are there in uh, on the right-hand side? Well. If that two wasn't there, it'd be one chlorine, but now there's two sodium chloride molecules, right? So it really looks like this, NaCl, NaCl. For you chemists out there, this is an ionic bond, not a covalent bond, but uh, trust me, most people aren't even gonna care. All you need to know is that there are two chlorines on this side and there are two sodiums on this side because the coefficient right there says there are two, on, uh, two molecules and there's two sodiums right there and two chlorines. So this guy is balanced. Why? Because the number of atoms going in is equal to the number of atoms going out. It's literally that easy. Okay, so hope you hope you're getting better at uh, counting um, atoms here. Let's do number three. Count the number of atoms on each side of the reaction. Is it balanced or not? So I always let me get a different color. I'm getting tired of that purple. 
I always rewrite it. Okay, I suggest you do so as well because it's just going to get you used to chemistry. Oops, I'm running out of room. Let me move over just a little bit. Plus 2AGCl. Okay, so let's get a lighter purple in here. All right, so let's look at calcium chloride plus uh, silver nitrate goes to calcium nitrate plus, plus silver chloride. So let's see, we've got some calciums on the left-hand side. We've got some chlorines. I'm just looking and I'm going from left to right. Now I've got some silver atoms, some silver atoms. I've got some nitrogen atoms and I've got some oxygen atoms. Ooh, this is a big one. So put your parentheses, whenever you see that coefficient, put your parentheses around the uh, around the molecule. So you're, uh, and, and if you're struggling with this idea of the coefficient, Okay, so you realize that this what this means is that there's two molecules of this whole thing right here. Okay, so I'm gonna extend that down. How many calciums are there on the left hand side or in the reactants? I only see one. Okay, I don't see any other calciums. How many chlorines are there? Here's one of them, but notice the subscript says two, so there's two chlorines, calcium chloride. How many silvers are there? Well, ignore this two for a second and just look at this molecule. There's one silver molecule, AG is silver. There's one uh, silver atom inside this molecule, but I have two of those molecules, so I have to have two silver atoms. How many nitrogens are there? Well, here's nitrogen right here, okay? It has no subscript, so there's one, but I have two of those molecules, so I have two nitrogens. I have an oxygen here, but I have three of them in this molecule, right? So O3, but then I have two of these molecules, so it's three times two, which is six. Okay, now let's just replicate it on the other side. Okay, so how many calciums are there? Quickly, one. How many chlorines? Two. How many silvers? Two. How many nitrogens? Be careful here. Right? There's a little subscript down here. Where does that subscript uh, where does that subscript apply to? Okay, you, you're probably not going to see this on the exam, but it goes right here. Okay? Because this subscript applies to this molecule. Okay, it's, it's, it might be confusing to you because you're not used to seeing a little subscript here and then another little subscript here. It's similar to this in, 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 in one way or another, okay? So how many nitrogens are there? Well, there's one inside NO3, but then there are, then there's two of those NO3s. So, or yes, there's two of those NO3s, so it's two nitrogens. I have three oxygens in this NO3, but I have two of them, so it's six. What is this, what does this CaNO32 even look like, right? Well, it's a calcium atom. Okay, that is uh, ionically bonded to uh, an, NO, an NO3 ion. Okay, so we'll just draw it like this, NO3. Okay, we'll just draw it like that, just for simplicity. So, uh, in fact, I don't even think the nitrogens are the ones bonding. I think it's the, I think it's the oxygens. Not that it matters. Pretty sure that's what it looks like. It's something like that. Well, who cares? What I really want you to see is that this, uh, don't be confused by this type of uh, uh, chemical uh, formula, okay? The subscript down here applies to this molecule. The subscript always applies to the thing that it's under. Okay, cool. All right, so let's uh, let's do this one. Calculate the density of an object that is 100 grams in mass and has a volume of 125. Let's make this dark. Has a volume of 125 milliliters. Okay, show your work. All right, so all you gotta do is write down the 
the formula for density, right? Because that's what we're looking for. We're looking for the density. So calculate the density. Rho is equal to m over v, which is equal to 100 grams over 125 milliliters. Okay, grab your old handy dandy calculator out if you really need it, and do 100 divided by 125, and you're going to get 0 0.8. And remember, don't forget your unit, grams per milliliter. Okay, that's it, not really that easy. And then it says next, will this mass sink or float in the following solvents? Okay, so look at acetic acid. If you dropped this, whatever this object is, I should, I should have said, uh, not the mass, but this object, will this object float or sink in acetic acid. Well, acetic acid is vinegar. You probably have some in your kitchen. If you measure the density of that solution, it'll be 1.04 grams per milliliter. Now I'm asking, will, will this object sink or float in, in that solution? Remember, if something, uh, let's, let's just, let's, how are we gonna write this down? Let's write it this way. Uh, if the density of the object is less than, this, than the density of the solution. I wrote this down in a previous lecture, but we'll just do it again. The, if the density of the object is less than the solution, what happens? Does it sink or does it float? If the density of the object is less, that means, it, go back and think about like convection currents down the mantle, right? How density powers the, uh, the, uh, the rise and fall of, of, of the, magma deep down inside the earth. If the density of the object is less than the density of the solution, the object will float. Okay? And it's the opposite. If the density if the density of the object is greater than the density of the solution that you put it in, then the object will sink. Okay, I'll squiggle that off because that's not part of five. But that's this thing is part of this. So look at our density. Our density is less than the density of acetic acid, so it will sink. Chloroform, 1.47 grams per milliliter. It's a very dense liquid. Uh, this will sink, or will it float? I hope you guys have been catching me and then probably saying, uh, Mr. Sally, that's not right. Shouldn't it float? Yes, it should. Why? Because the density of the object is less than the density of the solution, right? This object will also float in chloroform. What about water? It'll float in water. Why? Because the density is less than one, than uh, one gram per milliliter, which is the density of water. What is the density of, or excuse me, will it sink or float in hexane? Look at hexane, look at he hexane's density, 0 0.65, that is less that is less than the density of the object. So the object will actually sink in hexane. What about methanol? 0 0.79. It's technically less than the density of the object, so the object will also sink. Okay. In your own words, give, give reasoning behind the idea of conservation of matter. Why, in your mind, is the conservation of matter true? Okay, so I'm gonna let you do this one. I want you to think about why it's true. For example, have you ever conjured up anything before? Have you ever seen something disappear? Uh, have you ever put a pencil on a table, walked away, and 10 minutes later it's completely vanished uh, with you know no other possibilities of it going anywhere? I want you to talk about why, why atoms can't disappear. Okay, that's basically why conservation of matter is true. You cannot create or destroy matter, and that's what I want you to talk about. In your own words, what is the difference between a natural and a synthetic compound? I'm gonna let you guys do that one too. Um, by the way, it's all, it all, all has to do with, if, is, it, is it altered chemically by man? That's it, right? Natural compounds come straight out of the earth. We don't do anything to them and then we use them. Synthetic compounds, we, do some, we, we grab a natural compound and then we change it chemically. So go back in your notes, you can answer that one for yourself. Plastics are just large chains of blank that combine together to form polymers. Poly means blank. Well, if you go look at your review sheet, 
plastics are large chains of monomers. Okay, and they combine together to make polymers. Polymers are uh, poly means many. So poly polymers just means many mers, many monomers, right? So if you zoom into your plastic water bottle, right, and you zoom in, you see what it's actually made out of. It's made out of these little these little chains, these little subunits, okay, that go on and on and on for a very very long time, okay. Each one of these little circles is called the monomer. And the whole chain itself is called a polymer. Okay, gotta know those. Gotta know those. Uh, those terms. Oh, we almost missed eight. Crude oil is crude oil natural or synthetic or can be both. Bro, crude oil comes straight out of the ground. It's a natural material. We don't do anything to it. You just pump it out. You pump it out of the uh, deep deep inside the earth. You just pump it out, and it sits in a barrel. That is a natural material. But plastic is a synthetic material. Why? Because it, it took a chemical reaction made by a human, operated by a human, in order to generate the uh, synthetic material. So for example, this polymer did not exist until a human used a chemical reaction, right? A plus B goes to C plus D. They, did, they added some things from uh, crude oil to create, you know, Let's say C is the polymer and D is some byproduct, who knows? Okay. Diamond is a natural synthetic or can be both. Well, actually it can be both. Why? It can be natural if you find it in a uh, in a mine or something like that, but you can also make it in a lab. If you remember at the start of the year we were talking about synthetic diamonds. So it can actually be both. Okay, so the following uh, polymer is called a uh, polycarbonate. Okay, so there is the polymer. So this thing right here is just one uh, one of these one of these. Okay, so actually this is a monomer. It's a little confusing because it'll it'll be used interchangeably with chemists because they just they they work with it all the time. But this is actually a monomer of a polymer called polycarbonate. Okay. So this is the monomer that gets chained together. This just gets repeated. That's what that little n means. It's just this chain right here just gets repeated over and over and over and over and over and over. Okay. So how many bonds does each carbon make in this molecule? Well, guess what? You don't need to count them. I already told you how many carb how many bonds carbon always makes. Carbon makes how many bonds? Makes four bonds. And you look, you don't even need to you don't even need to trust me. Here's a carbon right here. Count the bonds. One, two, three, four. It's making four bonds. Look at this carbon. One, two, three, four. There's carbons in these rings right here. They're all making four bonds. How many bonds does each oxygen make? I'll let you answer that. Go back to the uh, review sheet. How many bonds does each hydrogen make? I'll let you answer that. Go back to the review sheet. Those got to be automatic. You need to know those instantly. So you don't even have, you don't even need to count them. The answers never ever change. Okay. First, examine the following chemical reaction under the rea under the equation. Draw the atoms entering and leaving the reaction. Feel free to represent each atom as a little sphere. So, uh, what I would do is I would just draw an aluminum as a circle, and then an H as a circle with a chlorine. Right? I'm just trying to get you to see it spatially, perhaps, because um, I know I struggle with the. Uh, the equation side of it, at least initially, until you see it visually. Okay, an aluminum atom combines with hydro hydrochloric acid to make aluminum chloride, an aluminum trichloride plus hydrogen gas. Now, is this reaction balanced? We've got one aluminum on each side. We've got one aluminum, or excuse me, we got one hydrogen over here. But look, we got two hydrogens over here. One chlorine, three chlorines. It's not balanced. Okay. So I want you to balance the chemical reaction. We've been doing this all year. I'm gonna let you finish that. I'll see you guys later, bye-bye.